Hey guys, Luke here from Australian Off-Road. I'm uh, going to do a quick video now on Webasto combination hot water units. Um, so just the background behind this, these are getting quite popular in our world, mainly to do with gas rigs, especially in the Quantum. So quite recently, as most of you would be aware, um, we never needed to fit the gas vents in the Quantum because you never had internal cooking. Whereas now the regulations have changed and because we've got a gas hot water system, which is situated underneath this driver's side seat, and um, we need to now fit a vent in the roof, we also need to fit a vent in the door. So the way around this is to look at going to diesel and eliminating the gas, which in turn would mean that you lose the vents. Now this particular trailer has got this option in, in terms of the diesel hot water, so we've replaced the gas. What we have also done in this one is deleted the diesel cabin heater, which is going to be a standard feature in your Quantum through to your Aurora. So a gas hot water system, diesel cabin heater. What we've done in this particular trailer is we've taken both of them out and we've put the diesel hot water combination unit in. So what I mean by a combination is it is predominantly a hot water system, but it has the ability to be an air heater as well. So the air heater is working off the back of the hot water system. So you have to run it as a hot water system to be able to produce hot air. But yes, this outlet here, which you can see just to the side of my leg, is where the hot air would circulate out from. So I'm going to break the seating down and take it apart so you can see the actual hot water system. Uh, this disregard for the second, I am going to touch on that. But realistically, in a standard combination world, if you got rid of the, the gas hot water system, the diesel cabin heater, you would go to a combination. And as I say, the key thing for me to outline is it is predominantly a hot water system. So you have to run it as a hot water system and produce that heat to be able to then get hot air to work through that. The output here where it has a three-way switch. So with this three-way switch, we can either turn it on low fan speed, high fan, fan speed, or turn it off. So you haven't got the same kind of controls if you had the separate cabin heater where you can really dictate temperature and, and speed. It is only coming out from this one outlet. Now, if I pull this seat apart, just so we can see, the unit itself will not really take up much more, much more room than what the gas would. It'll sit in the exact same location as where the gas hot water system would be. So this here is gonna be the Webasto diesel hot water unit. And then if we see, we've got these heater hoses that run off this to the side, moving to this area here. And predominantly the way this works is like a radiator. The glycol that is circulating around there will actually pass through and then we'll have a fan that will blow over them hot coolant hoses to then produce hot air. So I haven't personally used this. So I'm not going to say by any means I'm a specialist here. Um, but all the feedback and all the research I've done on this tells me um, that in most cases this is going to be enough for people in this size trailer. But when you start to go bigger than this, being that, again, it is predominantly a hot water system, it's not going to have the same effect as what it would if it was a separate cabin heater. So you have the choice of going to a combination, which is going to be the cheaper option, and you get rid of the gas hot water system, the diesel cabin heater, or you can pay more, replace the gas hot water system with the diesel hot water system, and keep the separate cabin heater. So that is going to be for people that want the best of the best in terms of heating, um, if you're doing a lot of cold traveling, if you just naturally don't like the cold, then I would tend to say pay that little bit extra and get the separate diesel cabin heater. Because for one, you can run that as a separate heater. So as an example, if you just wanted to jump in the trailer late in the evening and kind of get it warm before you came in to go to sleep, you don't have to run the unit as a hot water system and wait for it to heat through that process to then get hot air. Obviously, if you've got a separate cabin heater, you can just fire that up independent to the hot water system and let that do its thing and it will have an effect in this trailer very very quick in terms of that so that's your combination unit coming back to this unit that's sitting on the side here now this is an add-on that can be done to the combination unit so with the normal combination combination unit as we outlined we've got a three-way switch we've either got low speed high speed or off so we've only got certain controls in this area whereas this speed regulator that can be added on as an addition allows you then to regulate the temperature better, but also regulate the fan speed better. So this is just a little addition that can be done to that comb combination unit, just to give you a bit more control in terms of temperature and speed. Um, hopefully that gives you a good overview. Um, as I've just stated, please remember gas hot water system is still standard in our world. It's only gonna be going to diesel if 
each customer basically opts to go that way. So if people have had these in the past, obviously that helps because they know what they're in for. But the main thing for me that I'm trying to outline in this video is just realize that it is predominantly a hot water system. So you can't just come in here with the combination and turn it on as a heater. It has to run as a hot water system to produce hot, hot water to then be able to produce hot air. Hopefully that makes sense. But this is one of the one of the things that we talk about in the finalization meetings and also for people looking at our trailers from a new, it just shows you that there is different options there.